Welcome back, everybody. Now, should the person who's in charge of the NHS and social care have to be a picture of health themselves? That's the question being levelled at new health secretary, Therese Coffey. Never want to shy away from a cheeky little tipple or a puff on a cigar. Therese was told by Nick Ferrari, who's one to talk this morning, that she could do with losing a pound or two and asked whether she was a good example to be health secretary. She said that she was not the role model, but that she was focused on how to deliver for patients. So I want to ask if the health secretary needs to be the picture of health. Can I just say before that, we had a chap whose BMI was probably well within the parameters in the shape of Chris Whitty, who, in my opinion, did not do everything he could have possibly done for public health in this country during the lockdown. So there we go. Maybe shape and size isn't everything that matters. We asked this same question earlier, though. We were chatting about it a little bit earlier on. We spoke to the weight loss specialist... Steve Miller. Just check out what he had to say. The lady is intellectually smart. She's a very smart lady. She's intelligent. We are talking about setting a role model to motivate our nation to take personal responsibility for their weight and for their health. But if someone, I mean, it's a bit like booking a personal trainer and finding that they are, you know, obese. It, it just doesn't send the right message. We need someone that is an advert. And I think she could become that advert. And I'll, I'll tell you why. Because I think what she could do is actually transform herself to the picture of health. It doesn't mean to say you, you can't have a drink and, and, you know, enjoy yourself. She could transform herself and be the absolute inspirational role model that this country has needed for a long time. And what I would say, just let me say this as well. Very quickly. Is th there's the very quickly, there's been a lot of fat shaming online for this lady. I, I acknowledge that. So calling her names, someone said to me today, you know, she looks like a bouncy castle and, and or a butterball. Now, that's wrong. We should not be shouting those those names out. And I just want to make that clear. But yes, we need an example. Yes, we need someone that's a picture of health. Otherwise, she's going to be a, a okay. laughing stock. At the meeting she goes to in the NHS. Well, that was strong stuff, wasn't it? But I'm joined now by journalist and broadcaster Kate Smirthway, who thinks we shouldn't judge Therese Coffey. Thank you very much. Now, actually, I must say, I've had you on my shows before, and it's, I think we've got a rare point of agreement here, actually. I think this is disgraceful, some of the way that the debate and the discussion has been framed about Therese Coffey. The reason why I wanted to bring attention to it is... I actually don't think that this conversation will be taking place if she was a bloke. I also don't think it matters what size or shape our health secretary is. Your views, Kate? Well, I mean, I think that the whole idea that we're going to decide who's the best health secretary based on who appears to be in the best physical condition is, of course, laughable. We should be asking the question, who has the most experience? Who is the most knowledgeable in the area? We should be asking the question, has she worked for the health service? She hasn't. Has she got medical qualifications? She hasn't. We should be asking the question, is she somebody who's going to advocate in the best interests of patients around the country? Um, and the answer is quite clearly not. She's a huge huge advocate of privatising things. She's made no statements suggesting that she supports better funding for the NHS, better pay for doctors, better pay for nurses, better pay for those who put their lives on the line throughout the pandemic to save thousands and thousands of us around the country and, and, and indeed thousands of whom lost their lives. Um, she's made no statements suggesting that. She's, a, she's very much against women's health care. She's been a big um, supporter of anti-abortion campaigns. She's a terrible person she's to be health secretary, but not because some Somebody's found a photo of her from a few years ago where she's smoking a cigar. Because I think, yeah, honestly, who hasn't got a photo of themselves somewhere? That, that photo that's been doing the rounds is from 2015. Wow. Um, and I just think, of course, you know, if you dig through my Facebook page, eventually, yes, you'll find a picture of me at a party with a drink in my hand. Of course you will, because I'm a human being and that's how we live our lives. Um, and of course, that shouldn't be used to assess whether I'm right for a job. It no. should go on experience and skills. And when it comes to those, I'm afraid to say she definitely doesn't have them and she is definitely okay. a terrible choice for health secretary. Okay, well, well, but I think the way that the media okay, focus Kate, on, Kate, you know, the issue Kate, of what she looks Kate, like, come up for you're right, it's Come the up wrong for issue. Kate. OK, look, there's lots to get stuck into there. All right, so first mm. things first, I actually find it quite endearing that she's got a cigar and a little bit of booze down the top and she likes to belt out the karaoke. But you made some more points there, which actually I think are really interesting to unpack. You mentioned on the abortion laws. Now, she's been quite adamant, right? So she's a, she's a staunch Catholic. She was raised a Catholic. She's got 
traditional, quotes and quotes, traditional Catholic views that obviously will be against things like same-sex marriage and abortion. Interesting to note that she is herself a married, of course. Um, but she said that she's a Democrat, right? And so, actually, when the vote went through Parliament about abortion laws, etc., or same-sex marriage, she's part that now. So when it comes to abortion, she's not going to be trying to overrule any of the existing laws in this country. Does that matter to you? Well, she, yes, it, it is important, and she has said that, and, of course, I welcome that. But what... We don't just need the existing abortion laws in the UK left as they are and not undone. We actually need to improve on them because at the moment, abortion is actually still illegal in the UK. Now, the reason that people are able to get an abortion is because there are exceptions within that law. But under the Offences Against the Person Act, which is a 150-year-old law, um, it is still illegal. And then you have to get work around that and get an exception. And there are women in prison in the UK for seeking an abortion um, without who, because they haven't done it in the exact right way. And we actually need what we need to do is to completely decriminalize abortion in the UK because it should be a decision between a woman and her doctor and not a decision that the state in my view has any part in I think we absolutely can improve the way we have this situation in the UK where two doctor's signatures are required for an abortion you can have your head removed with one um, and in, in some cases I think people probably should but okay. um, but there are ways that we could massively improve the current law and she's clearly not somebody we're going to be able to turn to and make those suggestions to because, as you say, she, she considers it almost a favour that she's not going to try and unwind the existing laws. OK, I want to just drag it back a little bit maybe to her day-to-day -day job on that. Uh, uh, how do you feel about... Because you are, given everything that you've just said there and we've spoken before, you are on the left, right, politically. That's pretty obvious, OK? I mean, so, yeah, I don't, how, how uh, do you I, I don't argue with that, although that doesn't no. make me responsible for what anybody else who you think no, is No, but, uh, but said. this is the thing I want to talk to you about, OK, because it must therefore be disheartening for you to see, when you log on to Twitter, a lot of people on the left at the minute, I was very surprised by this, a lot of people on the left do seem to be engaging in quite misogynistic, fat-shaming things towards Therese Coffey. It's not a kind of gentler politics over there anymore, is it? So... Like, I find that really interesting because, obviously, when I am on the left, what I look at, what, you know, what I see when I go on the internet is, is thousands and thousands of very right-wing people sending me horrendous misogynistic abuse. Is misogyny out there in our culture? Oh, yes, on a massive scale. I mean, you know, Jermaine Greer said women have very little idea how much men hate them, but thanks, Twitter. The information is now widely available. Um, yes, of course, there are people who consider themselves left-wing who express um, attitudes which I don't agree with. And, of course, there are people who consider themselves right-wing in it. And I also feel like it's... You know, yes, have you seen what Twitter is like? It's full of horrendous things, and I am not responsible for what anybody else has shared. And I also quite understand that people are frustrated that we've been given yet another health secretary who has no experience working for the NHS, who's not making a point about standing up for doctors and nurses and key workers, who's not talking about advocating for patients, who's not talking about funding these things reasonably so that we can all get the best possible treatment when we are unwell, which, you know, we all know is going to happen to us in our lives. I think it's frustrating and I, it's a shame if people have responded in a way that can definitely be construed as fat shaming. But I, I also understand people are angry and the internet is a mess. And yeah, of course, you should see the things they write about me on the right. And I wouldn't ask you to defend those any more than I think it's my job to defend some people who say they're left wing, saying some things that I don't really agree with. Yeah. Kate, just, just out of interest, how much money would you be willing to plonk at the NHS? Because you've mentioned the case there that the NHS, in your opinion, needs a lot more funding. Some people would say it's already funded rather a lot. We've still got this massive backlog and indeed would have had it before the coronavirus anyway, of people, cancer patients, etc., not being seen. We've got child mental health crisis, all of this stuff. And a lot of people, a lot of people who watch this programme do look at what people like GPs are paid and they think, hang on a minute, maybe there should, maybe this money isn't being spent correctly when it comes to what some people would say is a, is a very financially bloated national health service. I think that doctors should be really well paid. I want my doctor to be one of the smartest people I've ever met. And I know that the NHS has a shortage of doctors, and that's because in other parts of the world, doctors are much better paid. And as such, lots of doctors leave the UK and go and work elsewhere. I have close personal friends who are doctors and who, who now live and work in Australia and other places because the conditions are so much better. I think what nurses are paid is a disgrace, and I think it should be increased 
A, in line with inflation, of course, and B, in line with giving them a really healthy raise to compensate for the way that they were worked absolutely into the ground during the pandemic and to put them in a position where no nurse is ever queuing up outside a food bank and all that kind of stuff. And I appreciate that, yes, this costs money, but I would point out that if you look around the world at countries where there is not nationalised health care, overall, people pay more for less health care. The most cost effective way to get quality health care is to organise it on a national basis. And there's a number of reasons for that. Okay. The main one being that when you don't, when people have to pay individually for their health care, they actually then don't go to the doctors until they're really ill because they can't afford to. People fall through the net and then we end up paying a huge amount of money to try and rescue a desperate situation. If you look around the world at what we pay for health care against what we get, we pay one of the smallest amounts and we get a lot of health care. We get free health care and it encourages people to speak to their doctors as soon as they're worried. So in terms of okay, how okay. much money would I throw at it, a, a heck of a lot more than we're throwing at it now. I absolutely think that we should be paying people a lot more in there. And I've got a way to save the money. Don't worry. I'm not, I'm not just here throwing money around. I think have to be very quick. Okay. Properly. I think we should close down the tax havens where a third of the world's money sits entirely untaxed. And we should use that money to pay for basic treatments for those people who need it and for a decent standard of living for doctors, okay. nurses right. and those cut people in, who save lives. I've got to cut in. We've got time. Time constraints. Kate, the Kate Smirthwaite there, thank you very much. Obviously, didn't think we should judge Therese Coffee based on her weight, but thought instead we should judge her on absolutely everything else. Right, moving on.